the switch has been open for a very long time. At equal zero, the switch closes. Find for the instant right after the switch closes, the time that we call t equals zero plus. What is the voltage in this capacitor? What is the current of this inductor? What is the derivative of this voltage in the capacitor? What is the derivative of the current in the and more? Find what is the current in the source and find the derivative of the current in the source. We begin with the snapshot at t equals zero minus. That is right before we move the switch in this case. This is that snapshot. The switch is open, so this branch is not part of the circuit. The inductor in DC steady state is represented by this wire. The capacitor in DC steady state is represented by this open circuit, so this voltage is VC naught. Actually, it's VC at zero minus, but we know that it is VC at zero plus as well. And this current is going to be IL naught the current in the inductor at zero minus and at zero plus. We don't compute anything else from this circuit because nothing else will remain the same once I move the switch. Only currents in inductors and voltages in capacitors. Let's compute them. A voltage divider gives me 10 times 4 over 6, which is 20 over 3. And this current is 10 divided by 6, so I will not is 10 volts divided by 6, that is 5 thirds of an amp. Now we go and take a snapshot right after we move the switch at 0 plus. At 0 plus the inductor is going to be represented by a current source with this value and the capacitor will be represented as a V source with this value. So this is the snapshot right after I close the switch. This switch is closed, so this 3 ohm resistor is now part of our network. What about this? This is the inductor's representation at t equals 0 plus. And the value? This value. This is 5 thirds of an amp. 1.6, if you will. But for the calculator, I'm going to use 5 thirds. And this voltage is VC naught, the initial voltage in the capacitor, 20 thirds of a volt. Now we can solve this circuit. What are we going to find here? The two parameters we don't know of, of inductors and capacitors. We know the current in the inductor. We compute the voltage in the inductor, this one, VL0. We know the voltage in the capacitor. We compute IC0, the current in the capacitor, at 0 plus. This is our reference. This node at the top is 20 thirds volts, right? It's known and known, 23rd volts. Currents in branches, those ones. We write a KCL equation for the top. Currents going in, 10 minus 23rds divided by 2. And that is equal to this current, which is 23rds over 3 plus the current in this RI branch, which is 5 thirds plus the current in the capacitor, which we do not know. It's an evil current anyway, and we solve for that one. I see not, and obtain that. Negative 2, 22 periodic amps. That is the current in this capacitor. And what is the voltage in the inductor? The voltage in the branch is 20 thirds of a volt. The current in the branch is 5 thirds of an amp. So we can compute this voltage here and write a KVL equation for that branch. And we say going up by VL0, VL0, going up by 4 times 5 thirds of an amp, the drop in this 4 ohm resistor due to this current, is equal to 20 thirds of a volt. And from there we determine that the voltage in the inductor is 0 volts. And what do we do then? Well, with the, we obtained the derivative of the voltage in the capacitor with respect to time at zero plus as being this current divided by C. And that is that derivative. Negative zero seventy four plus per sec. And what do we do with this voltage? Well from there we obtained the der derivative of the current in the inductor with respect to time at zero plus is that voltage divided by L. This is 0 amps per second. 
Now it comes to the final part. Finding the current in the source at zero plus and finding the derivative of that current with respect to time also at zero plus. How do I do that? Well, I write that current as a function of currents in inductors and of voltages in capacitors. What I'm going to do is make a drawing for t greater than zero, but representing capacitors as V sources like this, whose voltage is a function of time, which is unknown, and representing inductors as current sources whose current is a function of time that is also unknown. Let me do that. The circuit looks like this. When we solve for this current or any voltage or any other current, the current in the source, of course, that will come as a function of IL and as a function of VC of the voltage in the capacitor. Let's solve that. This is our reference node, node whose voltage is VC. Let me write VC, right? VC. Well, do we agree that actually this current is 10 minus VC over 2? I don't need to go any further. I say the current in the source, in this case, is 10 minus voltage in the capacitor divided by 2. So that current depends only on the voltage in the capacitor and not on the current in the inductor in this circuit. You say, yeah, that's uh, pretty good. Uh, that is 10 over 2, that's 5, minus 1 half of Vc, about Is. What is the value at 0 plus? Easy. 5 minus the value at 0 plus of Vc, which is known 20 thirds of a volt, that gives me this. So Is at 0 plus, then, is 5 minus Vc at 0 plus, which is known, divided by 2, that is 5 minus 20 thirds divided by 2. That is 167 amps, 1 amps in 2 thirds. So this is the current of the source at 0 plus, 1 amp and 2 thirds of an amp. 1.666 amps. And what about the derivative? Well, if the current in the source is 5 minus Vc of over 2 for any point in time, then the derivative of that current in that source with respect to time is going to be the derivative of this expression. Derivative of 5 is 0 minus 1 half the derivative of Vc with respect to to time, and this is true for any point in time. So at t equals 0 plus, this is just the value that we have for dvc dt and 0 plus divided by 2 and changed in sign. And this is, is here is dvc dt and 0 plus, 0 0.74 divided by 2, 0 0.37 amps per second. And those are the initial values for the current in the source. Thank you very much.